Remembering old times, Achilles? Connor. Oh, yes. I suppose I was. Seems like so long ago. Who was the assassin this belonged to? Originally, it was John de la Tours, the first assassin in the colonies. Then it was mine for a time. Ah, the things I've done wearing that armor. Some are uplifting to recall, others very painful indeed. One day, I will hand it over to you, Connor. It is your duty to keep it. It serves as a reminder for how long our brotherhood has really been here. How long we've been protecting the people of this land. But here I am going on again. I know you appreciate what it is. You want to tell him, my love? I'm pregnant. Congratulations. It's been a long time coming. It does present a slight problem, however. There's no doctor for miles. Well, then we should find one. I know of one that may consider moving here. His name is Dr. Lyle White. It's been a turn since we last saw him, but you might try his old house in Boston. There'll be a stew on soon enough. Bacon for breakfast. Up ready, are we? Morning, Connor. You could eat if you like. Good morning. Dr. White? No, oh, he's the drunken sodder on the corner. If you can get his attention, tell him I quit. All this ire on him. Not worth getting caught up in it. I have a family. Dr. 
My name is Connor. And what can I help you with? Another quote for the broadsheet for you to twist against me? I'm here to make you an offer. Don't you know who I am? I'm the doctor the British have been slandering all over town. White death. No? I was given your name by my friends Warren and Prudence. Prudence is with child and requires a doctor's hand. Prudence is pregnant? Ha! They've been trying for years, it seems. Maybe getting away from Boston is exactly what I need. I think not. Get back here now. Thank you, 
Our charge, Captain. The Belladonna, under Rodrigue Hotalis and Company. She appears Spanish for all intents and purposes, but rest assured she's a French vessel. French are bringing in a boatload of powder and guns for old Georgie and his patriots. Some colonial boats were supposed to escort her up the coast, but they left her behind. She's been waiting ever since. We will make sure Washington gets what he is expecting. Where is the Capitaine? I am the Captain. You are late! We came as quickly as the wind allowed. Too slow! What happened to your escort? Le Randolph started with us, then departed without warning! Typique! This is why the lieutenant insisted I come aboard! Partons! We'll go where we're good and bloody ready. What? The Atlantic is a dangerous place for a lone ship, especially one laden with such desirable stock. You must be glad to see us. Boff, it is hot here. My lieutenant is not excited for the cold of the north. Is this man being serious? Keep a sharp eye, Mr. Faulkner. Anybody searching for the Belladonna could be upon us in an instant with this fog. Aye, Captain. I've got a monkey's fist in me gut. A pirate. Why in God's name are the English here in such force? I do not know, oh, but we no. must oh, get no. the belt on the far. Ready after fire! We move for your front! Ready? 
Command know about the Belladonna. British command knows nothing of this. Then how are you here? We were led here by a patriot, Nicholas Biddle. Who does Biddle work for? Oh, I think you know. Assassin. Nicholas Biddle led them here. He said... The Randolph. The Randolph? Beat to quarters! Belay that order! He is putting us to his rudder. We cannot leave the Belladonna undefended. But, sir! She is incapacitated and vulnerable. Let him go. We'll see each other again soon.
Excuse me. Might I impose upon the kindness in your heart to give bed and board to a weary traveler? Oh, traveler from where? Across an ocean. London. English! <laughs> Rest assured, I'm not the king's man. A great kindness. Bless you. We work hard for what we have here, old man. What is it you do exactly? I wish to provide God for those who seek his salvation. Not spoon-feed his word to those who already have their own. An outlook not shared by the monarchy. Lord knows some of us have things to confess. Ollie and I have been missing our Sunday Mass. I'd like Maria to read the Bible. I'm sure if we all pitched in, we could build a church. If you'd be our pastor. Connor? Welcome, Minister... Father. Father Timothy. We are smiled upon.
bless you. This will build a fine place of worship. I am most... The stars are coming out. Prudence, are you all right? What are you Donna, doing out here in the woods? Thank goodness! The baby's coming! We need to get you to Dr. White. No! I can't move! Take my horse! Bring him here! She all right, Doctor? No, she's not all right. She's having a baby, and here, yeah, by the looks of it. He is. Looks to be in fine health as well. Has a good set of lungs on him. No, I don't mean to rush you, but we need to get both you and... Does he have a name yet? Hunter. Get out of here, mate. I'll get you. I'll split you. Enough. 
Cuidado. Yield or your friend dies. Thank you, stranger. What were they doing? This lot was dragging me through the countryside, trying to make an example of a deserter. Sorry, now, who are you? Connor. A deserter, you say? Don't much agree with the fight, and uh, I love this country. So there you have it. The name's David Walston. My friends call me Big Dave. Might I ask where you live so I could repay the debt when I'm able? It might take us a while. Us smithies don't earn much coin these days. Our community is not far from here, and we certainly could use the services of a smith. Would you consider plying your trade there? Oh, well, it would make repaying you a spot easier. Huh, I just might. chat, but I promised Ellen a bale of furs this week, and I'm not even close to making good. I need to get out into the bush right away. Two hunters are better than one. I can help if you like. Would you? I'd be much obliged. Uh, I, uh, I bring something for you. Maybe, uh, it will help. I really must get moving. I will thank you properly when I get back. Until then, meet me at my northernmost hunting blind after you take your first skin. Man is right. 
trying to break down our door with his mates. We're on our way to stop it. and Maria are free of you. I say so. The people behind me say so. Believe me when I tell you, if I ever see you on this land again, I will end you. You can have them. Thank you. All of you. Nobody has ever stood up for us before. We protect our own, Ellen. This is my home now. I'll find a way to show my gratitude to you all. I promise. My friend! Norris, what are you doing? She said yes! Miriam? We are getting married! I told you not to touch him, Norris. Is it true? <laughs> yes! <laughs> So now that you've been told, might I have a word? We have much work to do. Of course, what would you have me do? Accompany me to the inn. I have business there. Doris is a stickler when it comes to tradition. Miriam knows not where her father is. And they were hopeful that you might act his part at the ceremony. I am not familiar with colonial wedding customs. It means you will walk with her during the ceremony and give her to Norris, as her father would. I would be honored. Wonderful! On to other business. Our weddings are complex beasts and require many hands working together to execute. We'll need Warren and Prudence to provide food, Ellen to make them appropriate clothes, Big Dave to smith wedding bands, me to conduct the service, and Oliver and Corinne to host a banquet. That is a lot. We'll start here. Connor, everything seems to be in order for the big day. It is. Except, uh, I can't find Miriam. Ah, I'm certain she's making sure all is perfect. I will find her, my friend.
Why do you run? Leave me be! I'm no housewife. Nobody thinks you are one. That's what all this means. You may kiss your bride. Connor, enjoying yourself? I am. It is nice to see everyone together and happy. Look at those two kids. It's a lovely sight. Norris is one of my best friends, and he couldn't have found a better woman. Proud of him. Sometimes people are just right for one another. Norris and Miriam are a match made in heaven. Or a match made by Connor. Isn't that right? I only helped Norris muster his courage. The rest came naturally. My little brother Joseph tossed him in the river. <laughs> Connor, we were just recalling our weddings. Spirited events, I take it. <laughs> Spirited? <laughs> More like brawls than unions they were. <laughs> calling Joe Little is like calling me Big Terry. Boy's a bloody mountain. My younger brother had a blow-up with one of Terry's cousins. A minor disagreement about some lass's dance card. I'll just say Terry's cousin sobered up right quick when it was over. Poor boy. Sitting there sopping wet on a stump while Joseph spun around with the object of his affection. <laughs> it was good for him. Not him good things don't come easy. Excuse me, everyone. Thank you. I won't keep you long. I would like to present something to Connor and you all. I once said I'd find a way to show my gratitude for your courageous actions in my defense. And this is what I give you today. This flag is a symbol of our strength and unity. And I would hope you'd all be proud to fly it high above your homes and shops. I'll happily make one for each and every one of you, if you so desire. But this one is for you, Connor. Thank you. <laughs> 